Hey guys, this is Tony Lyons coming back with another Advanced King Breakdown tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, the template that I've made um, that kind of brings everything that we've talked about in the other tutorials together and shows you how to use each part uh, in the best way possible to get the best key that you can. Um, really sorry for taking so long to, to come back to do these tutorials. It's been uh, quite some time. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all you guys' support and comments and emails. Um, they really help motivate me to, to keep going and uh, I'm really glad uh, you guys are taking a lot out of this and, uh, and getting some, some good stuff. Um, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump into the order that you should put things and how if you put things in the wrong order they can uh, kind of screw up your key and let's talk about the reasons why they'll um, negatively affect your key and how we can uh, fix that with uh, the template hopefully or just uh, kind of the order of operations and how you should walk through so let's get into it okay so uh, with this green screen footage uh, and this background or just this simple uh, checkerboard background that I've made uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, <laughs> the ideal situation that you'd want to be in uh, and how uh, once we once we get into more complicated situations you have to revise uh, the template. So in this um, uh, little template here we have our green screen and we have our four major areas the core D spill, edge D spill, the core key and the edge key or edge mat. And you can see this is the core D spill is the one where we keep the uh, colors in the shirt, the edge D spill would be ideally where we uh, we get the edge color and and also it would ideally be the place where we do our our background blending so we get the nice uh, edge blending with our background you can see it's blending with the hair and such uh, and that would only be used for the edge so then we have our core key which helps us with our uh, center area and we have our edge mat which is a softer key so we have our edge mat, and then we combine the core key with the edge mat to fill in those uh, holes in the middle. And again, the core key can be either uh, a, you know, a pry mat or some roto or whatever you need it to be to, to hold out the uh, areas that we don't want to be see through. Uh, so then, after this background blending, we'll also use this core key to uh, add back that shirt color. And we are getting, uh, you know, a little bit of blending towards this edge, but we'll, we'll just know that for right now. Um, so, ideally, we have our our edge and core D spills kind of combined, and that's what this key mix is there. And uh, over here, we have our combined alpha, which is the core uh, core key and edge key. And so we shuffle in or copy in that uh, alpha. So after this copy, uh, we'd have the correct alpha and the correct RGB channels. Perfect. Uh, and then our, in our ideal situation, we would pre-mult and place it over our background and we'd be good to go. Uh, the background blending, as you can see, is, is doing a lot of good in uh, these areas. It might be a little strong, you know, you could, you could uh, jump in here and kind of adjust just this, so maybe it's not so strong. Um, and there you go. This is the ideal situation. And what I mean by that is, uh, the colors of the green screen have not been changed, and uh, there are no transformations at all done to this uh, this girl's plate. And everything's lining up with the background, so you can use the background information to blend. Now, uh, that is <laughs> not always the case, and I'll show you quick example and I'll show you a quick example here where we have some uh, serious color corrections <laughs> day to night and we have our uh, a complex uh, transformation but and what I define as a complex transformation is that you just can't simply invert it uh, and it has some motion blur and some some scale and rotation and that type of stuff but the main point of using this uh, card 3D is to show that sometimes it's not as easy as uh, 
hitting an invert button on your transform and so um, it's complex. So what happens uh, if we stick our color corrections and our transformations after we've keyed it? So as you can see some funky stuff is going on. Uh, you can see the checkerboard that has been mixed with uh, the girl's green screen and it is now uh, moving along with her and in the wrong place because it is a double transformation. We've transformed the checkerboard uh, of the foreground, but not the background. Uh, and so if this was a transform, you might say, okay, we can just copy this and place it up here where this background is coming in and invert it so that, so that the, uh, the background is moved into that position first. But um, obviously with, with these complex transformations or 3D card systems or any type of uh, stacking of transforms is not always that easy so um, also you'll see that the checkerboard uh, is color corrected it's also a double color correction it's blue now and you wouldn't want that uh, this is supposed to be blending with the background and if you're color correcting the background once it's been blending you're gonna get some uh, some weird kind of artifacting going on so color correcting after you've uh, blended it with the background is is not gonna work uh, either so if you want to do this background blending, uh, you're going to need a better place to put it than up top. Uh, you won't be able to put your color corrections and your uh, complex transformations at the bottom. Now let's move on to see what happens. Uh, naturally, you would think, uh, if I can't put them at the bottom, uh, perhaps I can put them at the top. And that's also not a very good idea, and we'll see why. Okay, so now let's look at what happens if we put the color corrections and the transformations at the beginning of the process. So let's start with the color corrections. So if I start messing with these colors, you'll notice, uh, of course, the key will go uh, awry because the key happens afterwards. So if you do an extreme color correction like a day to night, uh, the information that you were keying before is completely going to change and it's not going to uh, consider her very green and it's just going to key, key all that. Um, so that is, is obviously not going to work and it's going to be an even worse situation when we uh, transform it. And this is interesting. When we transform this, and I can just take, take away the color corrections for now, you'll see that the, the green, uh, it, she gets a really green edge and uh, you might be saying oh, why is that um, so when we emotion blur something for example or filter it or blur it uh, we are blending the pixels so instead of uh, a fresh sharp image like this where it probably would be pr pretty easy to key we're now blending all that green so it gets even harder to key because it's a softer ramp and it has trouble picking up those values so when you do something like this core despill or even uh, the edge despill, you get some some of that green uh, right there. So, um, so it really uh, messes up everything. You, to be clear, you want to you want to green screen or blue screen on the highest resolution footage that you have. Uh, you don't want to do any type of proxy or filtering or or reformatting or any type of transformation on it. You want to key it first so that you get all the, the best information for both your color corrects uh, and your transformations. Uh, you want to do that stuff after you've keyed it so that you key on the good information and then you manipulate it afterwards because if you manipulate uh, a good key, it's still going to look like a good key after you've you know, transformed it around. But if you transform it prior, uh, then you, you might be losing a lot of quality when you go to key it afterwards. Um, especially when things scale or again are motion blurred and such. So this beginning area is not the best place. It's not the best place to put your stuff. Uh, I'll just remove this for a moment. And so what we're going to see is that we, we, we have to actually change um, where this background blending is happening if we want to use it. Ideally it would be part of this despill uh, edge despill setup be right there with it, but we can't put it there because of um, the reasons I just said without you know duplicating color corrects and transforms all around. Ideally, we just want to uh, 
do the color corrections and the transforms one time, uh, not multiple times. So uh, as you can see here, I actually had to, to link a bunch of the transforms to rotoscopes uh, so that everything would be transformed together. So it's already uh, problematic. So uh, here's an example of what we will do. If we move this setup just down to after everything is combined, including the background, so it's towards the bottom, and uh, we're still using this despill map, but it's got um, some of the center center info in there. So we'll just take the the core key and stencil that stencil that out. So then when it goes down here. Uh, it's still doing the same job. Uh, now we still have the problem though, uh, where if we were to move this transform uh, to right here, uh, half the image would transform, but then we would need to duplicate it over to this um, edge D spill stream. And that's no good. You don't want, you don't want to be duplicating transforms. Um, that's that's not good. So what we're going to do is this this uh, edge blending will happen at the bottom. So what we'll be doing is putting our color corrections uh, below our key and our transforms below our key, but before our background blending. And we'll be shuffling this edge dispo into a channel. Uh, where we will bring the channel through, so that means we only have to do the color correction and the transform once. We'll pull the channel back out and use it for the background blending. And I'll show you that in just a sec. Okay, so as I just stated, the transformations and the color corrections have to go after the key and D spill area, but before the background blend. Um, and now I've made this uh, this template flowchart, which I'll, I'll post to the to the blog, and you guys can. Uh, take it for your notes or whatever. Um, so up here, as we saw, this is the green screen plate. We got a core D spill, edge D spill, core mat, and edge mat. Uh, and this is right here in the edge D spill phase is where we generate our D spill mat and we'll shuffle it in uh, into a channel called D spill. Uh, right under that is where we use the core mat and the core D spill to combine it so that we have our final D spill. Uh, the stuff that's supposed to stay the same color stays the same color and the edge is now blending with the background in all the areas that it needs to. Over here we have our uh first then we do our transformations after that and I would say it's probably better for you to do your color corrections before your transformations uh, just in case you run into uh, any any motion blur that will affect your color correction you, you'll want to do again the color correction on the highest quality uh, image that you can so that when you uh, kind of mess up the image of the transformation whether it be filter hits or shrinking or motion blur or anything like that, reformatting, uh, you'll have done the color correction on the, the highest possible quality. Um, so that when you transform it afterwards, you'll just be um, wrecking that high quality image. So after we've done those things, we will then bring our background in, shuffle out our mat, our D spill, and all in this section, and use it down here. So then we we have our final color correction and our final transformation, and then we bring our background in. So everything should be locked down by the time we bring our, our background in. We're not going to put any transformations below that or anything like that. Uh, I left a little area here for light wrap or, or kind of defocuses and that kind of stuff that goes after the background blend. So you're both uh, defocusing the, the background and light wrapping and all that stuff. Uh, and then, of course, we just merge it right back over our background image. And uh, that is it. That This is it in a nutshell. Um, it obviously gets 
more complex, um, but this, it obviously could get a much bigger and more complex script, but this is the essen essentially what we are trying to do. Um, uh, this is the simplified form of it. So now I'm going to uh, show you guys the actual template uh, and in just a second and introduce you to that. And the, the next template is going to be what I'll be putting on the blog and on my site. Okay, guys, so this is the Advanced King template. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it is kind of mimicking this little flow chart that I've made. Uh, you can see the different sections where the green screen comes in. This is the core D spill, the edge D spill, the core mat, and the edge mat. And then things get combined right here. This is where it copies the combined mat in. You get a little section for your color corrections, a little section for your transformations. And this section right here is our edge blend. And then whoop, it goes right into our merge with our background. Um, and you're going to have to apologize for uh, my graphics card. It's, it's going to uh, get rid of these lines and kind of be all shady until I, I zoom up really close. See, they kind of disappear. It uh, kind of sucks. But I'll try to select them so you can see where the lines are at all times. Um, so if, if you didn't understand the template, I'll just go through uh, this setup now. And the reason everything is so spaced out is... Um, so that I found, I found it's much easier to, to work and it's spaced out. Even if you don't have that many nodes that you're going to be using, it's easier to have everything spaced out so that it leaves you the option to, to kind of spread out your work in case uh, one of these sections gets really big. Um, and so you have plenty of room to work. I didn't want to uh, stifle anybody's work. So what I found was if everything is uh, clumped really tight together, then uh, you're kind of putting nodes next to each other and you're trying to save as much space as you can and it's, it's uh, not very work friendly so I, I spaced everything out on purpose and sorry if that makes all your scripts huge if you use it. Um, I will be releasing a compressed compressed version of this so it's the exact same setup as this except everything is very compact so that's uh, so if you know it's an easy key you can go ahead and use that one but uh, I'll just stick to using this this big one for now now let me just walk through this setup so we have our green screen coming in and we have our uh, core diesel as usual and all of these sections are meant to be replaced see all these little signs replaced with your own core spiller. so don't don't keep any of this stuff and I've just had a simple key light uh, simple key light set to set to one if I can pull this up, yeah. so this uh, is key light, and uh, the green is just is just typed typed one in there. If you had a blue screen, you could type one in there as well. Um, so nothing special about this key light. I'm not helping anybody out with this. It's just uh, as an example of where to put it. Um, and this whole little D spill luminance mat is just adding the luminance back on. So originally, it gets rid of the luminance, but you bring it back. So I left that in there because uh, usually you want to keep the core colors with the same amount of luminance. So uh, this edge despill. So there is something to be mentioned here. Uh, again, this is just a very simple key light. It's meant to be completely replaced with whatever despill works best for your situation. Um, but over here we have our, our despill difference mat, and that is just the difference between uh, this despill and the original plate, and that's what the mat you'll get is. Um, now, we bring it down, and see here there's a copy node, and I am I am copying the red channel, which is just this black and white image, into a brand new channel called dspill.red. Uh, and we will be using this channel, dspill.red, later on. And you can simply just check on that channel by plugging this in, and you'll find it right here, despill. So you can kind of track where that is throughout the script, uh, even after the color corrections and after the transformations. And you'll see, you'll see that this channel, along with the RGB channels, will be uh, transformed. 
Um, and the way that kind of works, you have to think of it, it's when you put multiple channels together um, and then you transfer them, it's like transferring, transforming a whole group. So everything gets transformed. So that means you don't have to copy the transformations as we saw in the previous example. Uh, we had to duplicate the transformations and sometimes uh, they can be uh, a bit uh, complex or uh, intense uh, CPU-wise, so you, you don't want to be uh, duplicating huge setups or huge transformations or or uh, lens distort nodes or, or grid warps or anything like that. You don't want to be doing that. You want to do it once um, and then shuffle it out just like I just did here afterwards so that you do it once and everything gets transformed. And the, the benefit to that is these pixels uh, are now exactly they're exactly the same filtering, same blending as the RGB. So everything stays very consistent with one another. Uh, and if you make uh, a change to this, um, then it, it will everything will change together. So you don't risk uh, accidentally changing one transform and leaving the other one uh, alone. So let me just go back up. We kind of get the point of that. We shuffle it into the channel and use it later after the transform. And that was just so everything gets transformed uh, together. Let's go back over to, to the core mat. This is still the same. Uh, I put a little note up here. Uh, I don't think I have this plate uh, denoised or degrained right now, but uh, I put a little um, little note up here. Place your denoised node or your denoised plates here. And what I usually do is uh, I will I will denoise the plate, render it out, and then bring it back up here. So really, uh, it would look more like. Come on. So really, if this was a uh, denoised plate, a uh, completely different plate that I, I read back in, I would break this connection, so I'll leave this alone, and i just plug it in right there, because we want to uh, use our denoised plates to key with, but uh, we still want to use our uh, regular grain plate to do some despills with, unless it's a very severe uh, despill, then you might want to use the... Uh, uh, Dino's played out before that, but for now we'll just place it over here so that we can uh, use it to, to core mat and to uh, edge mat. So core mat, you'll be using prime mats and rotos just like usual. Edge mat, I've done my little IBK stack technique. Got a nice soft key on that hair. That's good, and you can see all that noise still there because I <laughs> too lazy to denoise it. But yeah, that would be all gone. It'd be much smoother. Uh, so let's see. This core mat's pretty pretty important. We take the core mat and combine it. So we fill in. Let me see if we. Yeah, we fill in all those holes there. That's good stuff. Now we have a combined mat over to on this right side, which is good. Um, now I have this this node, and this is a uh, Luma Pictures node called uh, Xbond Blur or Exponential Blur. Um, it's got some very simple settings, size and multiplier. Uh, the good thing about this, this is kind of like the feather tool that I, I made. If, if you've uh, been on my site, you've seen uh, in the previous uh, tutorials. But the good thing about this is you can go both positive and negative, and that means it flips inside. So you're actually feathering inwards, uh, and this multiplier will, will uh, go farther or, or larger with it. Uh, and that can be really good with this um, core mat. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Um, sometimes, sometimes you'll want to uh, reel this reel this in and kind of do a, a really soft blend between these two. And that can really help. I think I went too far here, so you can see if I if I pull it back, um, you get a, a much nicer blend than if I just if I just left this alone um, between the core D spill and the edge D spill. So I'm bringing that back with a uh, heavily, heavily feathered edge. Uh, so you might not have this tool. So in the template, I've actually added a couple of tools in here. And so I've got my uh, feather tool and I've also placed this X-Bond blur. And again, this is from uh, Luma Pictures. Let's see, by Luma Pictures. Uh, this is on um, Nukipedia under uh, Luma's tools. You can find it probably just by typing in Luma or Xbond Blur. I'm not sure if they have it in a, a package. I think they have it in a package so you guys can 
I, I really recommend that you download it. They have some really great tools, uh, Alpha Clean, um, I think Fuse, which uh, I will kind of get into later. Um, the Luma Dispo, which is by far one of my favorite uh, Dispo tools. And I might actually be doing a, a side tutorial on the Luma Dispo to show you guys how to use that, which is it's super powerful. Um, but you really have to know how to use it or else, uh, or else you're just kind of messing with knobs uh, blindly. So I will... I will show you that uh, later on. So we've combined everything. Now we have a edge despill and core despill, so our final despill. So over here, we we copy our alpha. So now we have a fully keyed image. So we got our, uh, how it's supposed to look despilled and our nice alpha. So then we go down here, and I have a little section saying uh, put LUTs, white balance, and color corrections here. So anything, any type of color change you are going to do, you're going to want to put right there. Here we go, here's our heavy grade. Um, so you'll put those in this little color correct section which is above this transform section. So put transforms, 3D productions, anything here. So there we go. Okay, so then this is probably the most important part of this whole setup. So as we kind of alluded to before, we pull out this despill that has been uh, transformed along with the rest of the image. So everything everything is now aligned and uh, ready to be used. So here uh, is just a, a blank grade, nothing's been adjusted yet. Uh, black clamp has been checked off and you can go ahead and um, You can go ahead and color correct this mat if you need uh, more power in, in the whites or to crunch the little bit of the blacks. I'm just going to leave it alone for now. Um, you can also use this despill to now uh, desaturate. <laughs> I'm going to take off this extreme color correction here. But you can use this despill mat to uh, color correct or de sorry, desaturate. The, the background area now and you can see um, if I, it's, a, it's doing a little bit of, of a desaturating and again you could come in here with uh, this grade all these grades uh, have some default settings or this one happens to have a, a white point of 0.5 so I can boost a little bit of this mat so, so what are we doing here so we have our, our background and it comes in, and this node you have to adjust. This is the one you want to change the white point and black point. So uh, I've unchecked clamp black from this grade, and we want to add contrast with white point black point. The key is to add negative values so the dark areas get darker and light areas brighten. And uh, I found the best way, you can see here it's multiplied with our mat. Um, and the, the best way to apply this is to look right here at this plus. And we can look right here at this plus. So take your viewer, put it on uh, one of the viewers on uh, this merge, this plus, and the other one right here on the background. So ideally, we'll want to try to get that background kind of looking like it does regularly by itself. So go into this grade here and you want to boost the white point like so and you can darken the dark the black point if you want so here we go it kind of it's a little subtler which is fine uh, but it kind of resembles it kind of resembles the uh, background alone uh, and it's obviously making pixels darker and it's uh, lightening up pixels where it needs to. So I would say that's pretty much done. It's causing a little bit of some like weird haloing there. So I might just might just back off of the uh, there we go. I might just back off of that for for a bit. But you can see it's blending with dark pixels. So that that is very good. Um, and if we just check, uh, you can see yep, we have some negative values. Which is which is going to be good. Uh, that means it's going to darken uh, 
parts of our image, which is which is good. It's what we want. Because when we go negative, that means our pixels are darkening. So after all that's said and done, we will pre-molt. You can still see kind of the effect of the background being blended, which is which is good and fine. Here I have a section saying uh, to focus or uh, add additional filters. So any, any kind of, I don't know, lens stuff that you want to do. Yeah, some aberration or something you maybe want to do there. Uh, and here is where you put your light wrap. Uh, I'll leave that out for now. And it comes all the way back over and it is uh, merged. And so let's just take a look at this uh, important section here. And uh, shutting all that off, see, we would have some, some dark, dark areas or some not blended as well areas. But you can see now it is reacting. It is reacting to our background. See these the motion blur is not just uh, this dull color. It is it is now reacting and blending much nicer, uh, especially in this hair and any kind of uh, soft region. Obviously, there's some there's some problems. Uh, you would just go back with your uh, core de spill. Sorry, go back with your core mat and kind of fill those areas in. Uh, which is what that was for. So I want to mention one more uh, benefit uh, that I kind of built into this advanced keying template. Uh, so a lot of times after your um, after your key, after you've put it over your background, you want to see how it compares to the original plate. Uh, you want to you want to quality control, quality check it. Um, so I've added a a channel at the beginning. So I took this green screen plate. Uh, unaltered the, the full version and I have uh, shuffled the red green blue channel into a, a channel called GS for green screen uh, I know if you might be using blue screen but it's just called GS um, so that is actually carried through um, I believe this edge despill section so if we go to the very end of our script you'll see right before it gets over I pull out the uh, green screen uh, channel right here and that will now have the uh, transformations applied to it that the rest of the channels also had so it will line up exactly uh, I don't have the final color corrections so you'll have to copy and paste those down there it's not really that big of a problem uh, so let's turn both of those on or better yet I'll just copy this whole section and bring it down here so I'll delete this right here. So we have our key quality control, QC, key QC. So here we go. And we can see how we did. And let me just get rid of let me just get rid of this grade here. So you can see uh, the difference, I guess, and how much how much we've lost how much we've kept um, and it's just as easy as viewing uh, this QC in this region so we can even see uh, without that that color correction how far we've how far we've come there so you can see you know you've lost a little bit of yellow um, some work I believe needed to be done on this head area So we had that grade that we could choose to use and all that see-through stuff was actually coming out of this uh, despill mat. So if we just took it and slightly, here we go, just like so, we could black clamp that. And now that little area should be gone. So let's just check. So, yep, that fixed it. So now we're not... Um, adding background back over her, her head. So you can really pinpoint the types of areas that you need to go and find. 
and fix them according to this little QC section. So there you have it. Uh, that is the template um, in a nutshell. And you'll see once you switch backgrounds, things will change. Uh, the pixels will be reacting to the light and dark points of the background. Now, one thing I will say is the most difficult area probably to get your head around is this uh, background despill edge blending. And this um, background prep node, where you change the white point, black point, uh, will probably be the most important node that you adjust in the whole setup um, that's already there. So you'll just have to get a feel for for kind of uh, manipulating this this background so it goes goes negative and positive and see you'll get some crazy images just looking at it so as I said before it's probably best if you if you come and look at this um, this plus so if we looked here let's get rid of this wipe so once again according to the background it's doing a pretty good job uh, we could afford uh, this white point to go a little a little higher perhaps. Um, there is also something to be said about um, some of these some of these pixels becoming uh, not super valued or like too saturated so I mean in some situations you'll have to uh, lower the saturation uh, after this this grade um, to get things in check so they don't go uh, mega values or something. Um, but as you can see at this point, with this plus, we already have a comp. Uh, it already, <laughs> it already looks comped. And then what we do is, we pre-mult it and then place it back right over the uh, background that it already looked comped over. So, so these two um, areas, I get rid of that, get rid of that saturation, and lower it. So, these two areas um, should look pretty similar. And the difference is you're just pre-malting and placing right back over itself. So that is the setup. Um, I've just gone through it. Uh, it is not in any way uh, secret tips or tools. It's more of uh, a build order, just uh, an order of operations, a place where you're supposed to put each individual section that I've, uh, I've gone through and explained in each of my other tutorials, such as the edge D spill or the core uh, core key or the edge key now you have a place to put them and you have a setup that combines everything together so that you can use it to the best uh, to get the best image that you possibly can and the great thing about this is you'll know that if each of these sections is doing its own job correctly uh, and you manage to wrap your head around this little uh, background blending process then you will have a good key. Uh, there will obviously be problems um, with some keys, uh, and you can tackle it from there. But this generally works uh, most of the time. Uh, I've I've used this now for the past uh, two years or so, and it, it's really done wonders on even the most difficult keys. And it's all about adjusting each individual section to uh, to problem solve where where you need to. And uh, I've got some uh, simple instructions here. Core despill, replace with your own core despill. Edge despill, replace with your own edge despill. Should roughly match the background color despilled. Uh, key light set to blue or green with uh, an alpha bias set to 0.6 is a good starting point. I'll leave it that. Um, so the core key, replace with a crunchy core key. By crunchy, I mean uh, tight and not, not, many, uh, not many gray value pixels. With the edge key, this will be your normal key. Replace the nodes to whatever key you want. So if you like key light, if you like IBK, uh, if you like Primat, whatever you want to use, uh, use that in your edge key. And then this background despo blending. Adjust your background prep grade while viewing the merge, the plus. Adjust black point and white point to turn background darks negative and make whites brighter. Uh, adjust the saturation before the merge plus if the despill is turning an odd color uh, and we saw that uh, you can either do that right here 
or right here or both of those places to make sure these colors don't go uh, super crazy on you. So that's it in a nutshell guys. Um, I've got a couple other things to show you in just a moment. Okay, so as I've uh, stated before, I have actually a compressed version of the template I just showed you in case you can foresee um, that you don't need as much space and you can work in a kind of tighter uh, tighter setup. Uh, it's, it's the exact same uh, style and setup and template, it's just much smaller and as you can see, put those right next to each other. Um, but it's much more compact compared to this big old spread out one. So uh, I'll put both of those labeled uh, compressed or just regular uh, on my site so you guys can download both of those and you know pick whichever one works best for you. Um, I also have uh, something I made uh, for people when we we're kind of implementing this setup in uh, my old company which is more of like a walkthrough, so it's got all these little notes uh, on each part of it. So, so maybe um, some people that are that are more beginners or or need an extra extra bit of help understanding what every part does, um, can use this to to make sure they they know what every section does. Um, so I'll add this as well. And uh, if you look at the King template, I think I yeah, I have tutorial script. Uh, this is the walkthrough script, but obviously you won't have that link. So uh, I'll include this walkthrough script with it so that you can uh, check it out. Check out the little descriptions if you if you want. Um, if you understood everything that I've uh, pretty much said in this tutorial, you, you will not need this walkthrough script at all. So just, just ignore it on the site. Um, that's it, guys. Um, this is a template that I use uh, constantly at work when I do my keying. Like I said before, it doesn't uh, it doesn't do any of the work really for you besides organizing uh, the stuff that you have. So you can still key in any way that you want to. You can still despo with any tool that you choose to. If you have a despo madness tool, then go crazy. Uh, if that's your favorite despo tool, um, it's not trying to to make a key any any differently other than um, where you put things and also, this this really really crucial uh, background blending step, uh, which I think really makes or breaks the key. And so, the whole template is designed so that you can use this uh, background blending as cleverly as possible. So please do; uh, it'll really help your keys out, I think. And uh, this QC process also really helps. Um, you can see exactly how well your key is doing and where you need to bring back certain areas. So I'll post all of these templates um, on my site along with this tutorial. Uh, perhaps I'll, I'll throw them up on Nukipedia along with a bunch of other tools that I, I should probably have already thrown on Nukipedia. And I just wanted to say again, thanks so much for all the support and, uh, and your patience of waiting. Uh, so long for me to, to dish out another one of these uh, tutorials. Um, I would say that this is the last in the set, but uh, I'm going to be releasing probably another one or two um, with some tips on either uh, Luma Dispo, if I can, or uh, something else which is a, an additive keyer, which some guys, some of you guys have heard about, which uh, I'll go over, which has been really helping uh, getting some finer details in, in, uh, in the keys. So I'll make uh, some separate tutorials for those. Um, once again, thank you so much for, for watching. And uh, I hope all this stuff is uh, still continuing to be useful to everybody. And uh, leave some comments um, on what you guys might want to see next after I finish these uh, keying tutorials, which is pretty much wrapped up on. Uh, I was thinking about uh, digging into some some uh, painting techniques, uh, some roto paint, and kind of uh, what I've picked up over the years on quick tips on how to paint. Um, 
So if that's something you're interested in, please let me know. And uh, hey guys, until next time, I'm Tony Lyons.